Hey there, let's spend a little time learning uh, Lena Del Rey's video games. Um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to talk about the piano chords she uses. Uh, we're going to talk about some technique work, which is how to block in chords with your right hand to get that really good piano voicing. We're going to talk about the rhythm that she uses, because um, I think that's kind of important. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the key and how the song was written using the key signatures. And lastly, we're going to use that to modulate that into an easier key if you can't quite pull off these bar chords to play it with a capo in the key of G or E minor. So it's going to sound a little something like this. So um, I, I made a chart of the whole song. It's on my website at, at the link below. So grab that. It's under transcriptions. Um, and let's go ahead and just get started here. The song is in the key of F sharp minor, but we're going to relate it into the key of A major because it's easier to think of it within a major key. F sharp minor is the relative minor to A major. So they're basically the same chords. So if you were to have my new amazing book, Black Forest Music Companion, and check out the circle of fifths here, you'd understand that the key of A major has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, which is really important when you're writing a song and understanding how all the chords fit together. Because when I think of this song, as I think of this as a six, one, six, one, meaning F sharp minor to A major, right? So F or A, B, C, D, E, F sharp is the sixth chord in the key of A major, right? Let me know if you have more questions about that. I'll explain it more, but I want to kind of get through this today. Then we go to the three chord, which is C sharp minor, A, B, C sharp. In any given key, our diatonic chords, one, four, and five are major, two, three, and six are minor. So sevens half diminished, and we'll, uh, we don't need that in this song. We'll talk about that more another time. So in the key of A, we know we're going to be looking for a lot of A's. Our four chord's going to be D. Our five chord's going to be E major. We know that's coming. Two is going to be B minor, three is going to be C sharp minor, and our sixth chord, which is, is our you know, minor key chord, is F sharp minor. So take a close look at these chords. You, should, you probably all know these by now. If you don't know these, you definitely need my book. So again, and if, this, if these bar chords are too tough for you, you can kind of scroll to the end of the video. We're going to talk about how to modulate this into another key using a capo. It'll be a lot easier. I uh, personally, I like the sound of it using these, using these bar chords. So uh, what we're doing is we're playing F sharp, A, F sharp minor, A major, C sharp minor. We're gonna stop here for a second. Because you hear that harp or whatever that is. That I wanna talk about blocking that in, or kind of arpeggiating that or rolling it to D major. And I'm playing my D major like this. Some people like to do it like, like so at the fifth fret. My root's on the fifth string at the fifth fret D. You could also choose to go to an open D major if you like it. I just like to have that voicing a little more closed. I play it by squishing my ring or my pinky as close as I can to those frets. If you don't understand how to do that, let me know and I'll, I'll help you. So we have... Right? The first time through, they hold on the D. And so this is where we talk about the rhythm of the song. I feel this song strongly in two. Um, you can almost think of it as cut time, um, where the tempo, it kind of underneath the beats, doom, boom, and that's what kind of gives it that really heavy, you know, serious vibe, right? And it's hard, if you set your metronome that, it's kind of hard to feel, but if, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the beat be a half note. So we're gonna feel. And so each measure, when you see the score, is gonna have actually two chords in it, so it would be written in 2-2 two, two time, because it's almost like a march. If you try to feel this in 4, you're going to run into trouble at the end. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, rest, rest. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, back to the F sharp minor. So that's the whole that's the whole pattern. That's why you'll see on the score that the first time through you have that measure of rest after that first D. So check that out. Make sure you have that in front of you, then you'll get it. Okay? So that's that's the basic deal for the chords to the verse. We'll go into the chorus, which is in just a second. I'll play it for you. 
let's talk about how we're going to play these chords. I really like, um, from playing a lot of you know, classical guitar, I like doing the song finger style. You could totally strum it. But you know, the, if you haven't blocked in chords before, it's a really, it's a really good practice to use with a metronome because it's actually pretty hard to do to really feel that downbeat, right? So if you were to take um, this F sharp minor, that'd be fine. Now we're going to take our thumb, which we call P, I, M, and A. We're going to use these three or four fingers, and if you kind of curl them lightly, right, you kind of, they make like a line, oops, sorry, like this. And if I bring them down the strings, each one can grab a string. So I'm going to have my thumb do my bass on six. My pointer, my middle, and my ring are going to each hit a string, four, three, and two. And I'm going to practice. Notice that my knuckles are over the strings I want, right? So I'm not doing this. I'm not playing from my arm. I'm playing from my knuckles. So I'm doing this. That's what you want to do. The other big thing we want to remember when we're blocking in chords, because we're playing all at the same time, not, we're not rolling them, we're blocking them in, is that my thumb is going outside of my pointer finger, so they don't run into each other. You'll see a lot of this. That's trouble. You want your thumb to come outside of your pointer. That's important. I also have a little bit of angle on my wrist. It's not totally straight or flat. I mean, you can do that if you want to, but I like to have a little bit of angle on my wrist so my fingers can swing a little bit more freely. Right? Here's another shot of it. Just seem kind of, ugh. It's like this. So, we're going to play root, four, three, and two. Our root for A moves to the fifth string. So it's root on the fifth string, four, three, and two. You know, it just takes some practice doing that with a metronome. And going back between F sharp minor and A major, that's a nice kind of hard change. Up to the C sharp minor, that roots on the fifth string, so same pattern. But what we're going to do here is we're going to roll this one. Thumb, pointer, middle, ring. To get that feeling of the, um, I'm sorry, to get that feeling of the, of the uh, harp. With the D, we'll do the same thing. So I'm just doing, they're all planted on the string. Each one's touching the string with the fingertip, and I'm doing thumb, right? Start it slow. Sounds cool, huh? So I have... Kind of makes it musical. Right? And so that gives us our real piano feel for this song. Now moving into the, into the pre-chorus, what she's doing, she goes to the dominant chord, and she holds that, I guess she doesn't, whoever's playing it does, on this E, and you know, it's all blocked in still, but I'd probably maybe strum it a little bit to E major, getting this ready, I hear a little sus in there for a second by adding your pinky, but you just hold it E to D for four. We go to G major. G major is not diatonic in the key of A major. G major is a flatted major seventh chord. Remember, A major had a G sharp. So this is a you know this is like I think of it almost as a Beatles chord because they loved it so much and, and it happens so much in rock and blues. In the key of A major, we're having our first non-diatonic chord in the song. So she's doing on her way to F sharp minor. That's important. So again, it's in the score, but you can put a G and you can do an open G. I like to do a bard. So four Gs to three A's to G, uh, back to the F sharp minor. Sorry about that crap, that's my heater. E major, D major, back to the D. And then at the very end of that chorus, before she goes back to the, to the verse, you'll hear a momentary that it'll turn to the minor four chord, another non-diatonic chord, another really common um, songwriting tool, which is that D minor, right? So you can do the D minor here too. But that's the structure of the song. So, um, so far we've talked about the key, we've got how to do it using these blocked in chords. You might want to strum a little bit on this E getting ready for it. To kind of build it up a little bit. Two, three. Flat in major seventh chord. So if you're writing your own song, you might want to try this. Now, uh, lastly, uh, that's the song. And so I think I think this is this is how I like to play it. And um, let's just say these bar chords are just terrible for you. They're really tough. You can't quite pull them off. 
Well, we want to be in the key of A major, and we want an easier key to do it in. And we have to think to ourselves, okay, we had a 6, 1, 6, 1, 3, 4 progression in the key of A major, right? Well, G major is a much more guitar-friendly key, and we have our squeezer here, our capo. And if we capo at the second fret, right, and I play a G major chord, we get an A major, right? Because our root is on the fifth fret of the sixth string. So I can do the same thing if I think, oh, what is six in the key of G? I better, I better check my key signature here. G major has just one sharp. So I know that in the key of G major, my one chord is G, my four chord is C, my five chord is D. My two chord in the key of G is G, not H, it's A, we go back to A, so A minor and B minor would be two, three, four, five, our six chords E minor. So I can do an easier version of this song by thinking to myself, oh, E minor is six. One, six, one. What was that three chord? B minor to C, right? B e minor, G. Boy, that's easier. Right, then you think going to the chorus, our five chord D. Totally cool, but you should be able to figure that out yourself. Um, it's probably an ultimate guitar or something. But if you want to make a good lesson out of it, teach yourself it that way. Uh, it takes a pretty simple song and makes it turn into a pretty cool lesson and then helps you. Those are all good building blocks for writing your own material. So again, I'd probably do it in A if I could. Um, and if I can't, no big deal. Throw a capo at the second fret, play it in the key of G, and just modulate it in using those chord numbers. So it's a lot of business we talked about today. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, it's a cool song, though. Thanks. Good luck.